So today we have a very key description about our VARHO process, Bowles hands resistance, hydration, oxidation, proton and electron pressure. Because today we're going to be talking about the acid alkaline balance known as the pH. It's very important that we understand that in the body there are different charged particles, different ions, etc., negative and positive. And the amount of these determines our pH. Now, since we have an electrical measure with carbon electrodes, we can run electricity in different ways. We can find out the balance of the positive and negative charges, giving us an indication of the proton and electron pressure and the pH. Now, pH is zero in water. So we see here water. And basically, pH is a, tells us about the amount of protons. You see, so we have certain things that are acid, and they get more protons. Acids accept electrons, you see, so they get more and more of the protons. Then we have other things that are called bases. These are hydroxyl ion concentrations, and these will accept the protons. So we have acid and bases. In the human body, there should be roughly a little more negative, should be slightly alkaline in the human body. But different parts of the body have to be acid in order to operate. We have to have carbonic acid in the breathing cycle to be able to totally respirate, etc. We also have to have in the lymphatic, sometimes it has to be acid and alkaline, skin, different conditions, etc. will vary. The overall body should be slightly alkaline. And blood is very important that blood stays alkaline. Blood is very important to be in an alkaline state. The part of the body that is most acid is the stomach. We need stomach acid to protect us and also to prepare digestion, break things down. Stomach acid is very, very strong acid. Now, people start to shift more and more acid when they eat bad foods and they have bad behaviors. We're going to talk about this in depth today. And as we work with our system, we've measured the SOC. We find out their lifestyle and their behaviors. And certain of these behaviors, not getting exercise, not drinking, cigarette smoking, will drive the body acid. Now, our system, with its carbon electrodes, is going to be able to measure whether you're in pH balance, acid or alkaline. And we will be able to treat it, be able to correct the acid alkaline imbalance. Now, we will show this on our screen It'll look like this. We'll be able to see the proton pressure, electron pressure. And the proton pressure is designed to basically be an indication of the pH. So 71 tells us that the pH here is 7.1. Okay? Now, the electron pressure should be the opposite, but it isn't always the case. But as we look more and more into our system and into the patients, we're going to see that the ideal pH is going to be 7.4. 7.1 is a good pH for our patient, for the external system. But the blood has to be maintained around 7.3, 7.4. A little bit change in either direction will definitely create a problem and an indication of health. Just a slightly acid 7.2 and you're really sick. 7.5 and you're really, really sick. 7.6, 7.7, you're dead. You see, very, very crucial, we keep the blood. And the blood has lots of buffering systems. You see, because inside we have the hydrogen ion, that, that's the, the proton. And then it separates and joins, rejoins with the hydroxyl ion. And the speed that it does this is known as the zeta effect. But then we get our system and we can measure this and treat it. Now let's learn more about the pH of the body. The fight of health is a fight against acidosis. We have to stop ourselves from becoming too acid. This is a part of all disease process. And today, most people are just eating the wrong foods that are driving them into more acidic conditions. It just drives the body into more acid states. And what we want is we want to try to get back to alkalosis. We want to try to get back to survival range so that the blood will be slightly alkaline and that the rest of the body is slightly alkaline to get the maximum amount of health. This is very, this can be done with our machine, this can be done with good lifestyle, and this is something that's very important in our battle for health. We have to recognize that the body needs acid, we need stomach acid, 
the stomach acid strong enough to dissolve stainless steel. So we, we, it, it's a function. But then the pancreas and the liver will combine to help neutralize that acid. This needs sodium bicarb. This is very, very important that the sodium bicarb be released by the pancreas in order to do its job, to neutralize the acid. So sodium bicarb is a part of our lives. <laughs> yes, it's the same thing as in baking soda. And basically we have to recognize that when we drink coffee, coffee stimulates the release of sodium bicarb. This will make the pancreas release that sodium bicarb. And if you have, if you have coffee during the meal, it's going to then make the pancreas release the sodium bicarb twice. That's going to be a problem. We don't want to have to release that twice. We then will, are supposed to reabsorb that bicarbonate in the kidney and in the intestine, you see. And reabsorption of this takes time. It takes about three, four hours. That's why we should have, uh, we should wait between meals. And if you have coffee during the meal, coffee with the meal will cause the pancreas to release the sodium bicarb twice, once with the meal and then after. This irritates the pancreas. And this is the cause of most pancreas cancer, making that pancreas irritated. So we have to recognize that it's very important because studies have shown coffee and pancreas cancer. But this is because coffee during the meal causes this pancreas cancer. So we have to recognize it's not coffee alone. Coffee has some very, very nice things. But if you have coffee during a meal, then you will render the pancreas useless. It won't be able to function. It will be irritated. So we have to be able to stop this. If we have the coffee an hour and a half after the meal, then the coffee will act as a digestive aid, stimulating the sodium bicarb at the appropriate time. Just wait a bit. First thing in the morning, don't have coffee. Apple cider vinegar, sodium bicarb, virgin olive oil. These are the things that you might want to start your day off. And if you want something to drink, a little bit of something to drink with the meal, here are three healthy teas, the star anise, artichoke, celery. These type of teas are very helpful to be able to clean and help the pancreas. Now, when we breathe, there's a carbonic acid cycle that uses this bicarbonate. This also helps to neutralize the acid in our, in our system. The kidneys are there to design to help to balance the acid-base relationship in the body. So it's very important. People have used baking soda for many, many years because we get sometimes bicarb deficient, especially having coffee with meals. When we are bicarb deficient, we need some bicarb. And bicarb has been shown for cancer treatment, all different other things. In fact, traditional medicine will use sodium bicarb as an injection that will help in cardiac arrest to get you out of that acid state. So we recognize that getting bicarb up, but bicarb is not so magic. Don't get too crazy with it. But a little dose now and then can help you, to help you to, to fend off many different diseases. So here's the basic rules of the stomach. Let's learn how to obey the rules of the stomach. Let's learn about all the different things that foods eaten and made with love are nutrition. Foods made or eaten with anger are poison. Let's recognize these things. And let's recognize that we want more alkaline foods and less of the acid. Acid alkaline balance is so important for the circulatory system, the nervous system, the lymphatics. It's important for life. We need to learn a lot more about this. Let's continue. Another key factor in the acidosis cycle, making our bodies turn acid, is problems of the membrane. Deficiencies of calcium fatty acids, they not only allow viruses to work and penetrate, but they create other problems, acidosis. You see these different phospholipids, these fatty acids that make up all the membranes of the, of the cells of the body. Their heads fear the uh, water and the tails like the water. 
So they line up to make these membranes. These membranes are very key in being able to keep protons on one side and the other and create all the factors of life through the cell membrane. But when we get fatty acid deficiencies, we get problems in the membrane. Here's a an idea of the signs and symptoms of essential fatty acid deficiency. Feeling cold or a chill before others in a room, that's one of the ones that I found most important. But you can see there's a host of other different symptoms here that most of us have from time to time, because a lot of us will get fatty acid deficiency, or we might get deficiencies of omega-3. That's a very, very key fatty acid we need. We have done the studies that fatty acids can be used to help to uh, stop acidosis and get people a little more alkaline. You see, when they get these fatty acids, not only do the membranes work better, but they allow for better detoxing. When the membranes of your fatty acids are right, stress can be tolerated. And, when st and even repair can be done better of the membrane when you have the proper fatty acids. But when you get bad fatty acids, and what's the real bad, bad fatty acid in the world today? Well, all we have to do is look at French fries. Because French fries kill more people than guns and sharks. We've got to stop boiling foods and oil. That gives us bad fatty acid. Now, here's a cure for fatty acid deficiency. I've made up a nice little formula for you to help to cure fatty acid deficiency with a nice little guacamole giving you all different types of the full range of fatty acid that you need. But sometimes it's just as simple as a little olive oil, a little virgin olive oil. Unsaturated plant fatty acids are the best, but even saturated ones. But plant fatty acids are the best ones at neutralizing the acid and building up the cell membranes for health. Get your omega-3 through supplementation through foods, and recognize that there's a host of different things these fatty acids and olive oil can do for you, and they can help you, but most of all, they can help you to correct problems with acid alkaline in them. Now, we discussed a little bit about how we measure the body pH. Now, let's discuss about how do we correct it. How do we treat that? Well, we have a system with the carbon electrodes, and we're able to measure the body electric, and then we can intervene at that same type of level, very, very soft level, so the body does not, is not allowed to turn on its defense mechanisms. Now, if it is too acid, we can turn on square waves to get maximum electrons. If it's alkaline, we can turn on spike wave minimum electrons to help ground out. But then through an electrostimulus, we can start to add electrons to the acid body and we will get what we see here. We will then be able to help to neutralize the acid because the acids accept electrons. And with our system, then they're able to help to get to a type of a balance. When the patients start to get into acidosis, they get acidic foods in acidic life. It starts to create all different types of problems. The bones become brittle. They get osteoporosis brain problems, heart problems, liver, kidney, stomach, all happening because of acidosis, disturbing functions, intestine, skin. We see that this is the start of almost all disease. And the lungs create mucus, cough, chesting problems, sinus issues. And a lot of it is due to really bad quality foods. We need to stop boiling things in oil. We need to recognize just to get the best alkaline types of foods and be able to do that. Now let's look at the different types of factors and let's start to study more about how our system helps acid alkaline imbalance. 1989, we registered the VAR HOPE as part of the EPFX with the FDA. Also, electrophysiological reactivity the ability to measure a person's reaction to voltammetric signatures. And this was registered in 1989 with the FDA and now is registered all over the world as a medical device. Being able to do these measures and make a measure of the body electric to help correct it. What we call the body electric vital signs. And this work, this vast amount of work has been published 
at the International Medical University Medical Library around the world. With the system, we're going to be able to measure the body electric and treat the body electric and auto-focus the maximum electroosmosis pulse. This will help to wake up the body, move waste out of the cells, move nutrition in, and all of the cellular processes will be improved because of the increased autofocus electroosmosis, allowing us to maximize the healing effect with our machine. Our machine can help. Our machine really does work. We've been doing this for over 30 years, lots of different studies. But sometimes it takes more. We have a breathing exercise now we're going to teach you when we have extreme problems with acidosis. The mechanisms of breathing. We're going to be giving you a breathing exercise for oxygen, alkalosis, hormones, autonomic nervous system balance, and wellness. You see, most people are only getting 25% available oxygen, some even less than 10%, smokers, etc. What we're going to be talking about today is a complete breathing exercise, an exercise akin to the work of the Iceman, Mr. Hawk. With the three of, uh, three parts, actually the whole body, not only the lungs are breathing, we are able to manipulate. The most important muscle is the diaphragm. To be able to bring air into the lungs, the diaphragm will pull down on the lungs, the belly will come out. Then we also have the intercostal muscles of the chest and ribs to assist. We want to maximize the oxygen using the intercostals, using the ribs and the diaphragm and all of the different muscles to force a maximum amount of oxygen into the system starting with the belly, then the chest, and even into the sinuses and into the head. So we get maximum oxygen into all of the cells of the body. For 30 breaths, a full 30 breaths. Belly breathing is deeper part of the, uh, of the lungs. The chest is the upper part of the lungs. That is deep breathing, and even within the head, we are able to receive more oxygen. As we look over the head and fill the sinuses with oxygen, yes, there are sinuses, and they will capture oxygen. And with a slight pineal gaze, looking up the center of your forehead, you'll stimulate the pineal pituitary hypothalamus. And with this, because the sinuses are the cooling tower of the pituitary gland, the cooling tower of the hypothalamus, the cooling tower of the limbic system, and with this, now we're going to be bringing oxygen fully to the body, waking up the limbic system, waking up the emotions, waking up the hormones, getting everything working, and especially waking up the pineal gland, the third eye, as people have said, the place where the soul is, as Descartes meant. And the pineal gland is the producer of DMT and melatonin, so it has that real spiritual aspect. We don't even understand all these different hormones, but the melatonin will help to bring down the brain wave and help us to deeply relax and sleep. Yes, a three-part system, the diaphragm, the belly, the chest expansion, the head, the sinuses, to get all the maximum oxygen into the system for 30 breaths, 30 relaxed breaths, taking in the air, expansion maximum, and then resting and let it come out gently. Belly, chest. Hat. That's the way it goes, like this. And letting go. Fully in. Letting go. Now let's add some more parasympathetic juice to this. Inhale. Stimulating the vagus nerve, belly goes out. Joyful smile, stimulating the facial nerve. Serene eyes, stimulating the ocular motor. And pleasurable exhale, stimulating the glossopharyngeal. <sighs> you feel charged. You feel very lightheaded, loose in the body, tingling, strong. That's a charge. Can you take him in? 
you let it go, you stop, time again, and let it go. We have the second pump and cranial pump. Okay. So that is the major part. Okay. So uh, a very simple exercise we say, moving the spinal fluid and the brain fluid. Okay. So what we do, we, we inhale, we go like this. We inhale, you expand your chest, okay. you expand your stomach, and your neck go, And now when you exhale, you curve down. So you curve everything down. Inhale. Exhale. Pull it in. Let it go. Pull it in. Let it go. 30 times, 40 times. Letting go and stop. No breathing anymore. Relax. Witness. Your body is oxygenized. You are very able to go past the conditioning, conditioned reflexes. The chemistry of your body actually is better than before. There is no need for breathing because it all is based on acidity breathing. You are alkaline. No forcing, just being. Looking at the magic of physiology. Witnessing. Just go with that, whatever you feel is different. That is oxygen, still without air in the lungs, and he is okay, no force. When you feel the urge to breathe again, fully in, hold 10 to 15 seconds. And then round number two is done. Whenever you, okay, and now fully in, and hold, and squeeze a little to the head, because it's nice, that's oxygen in the brain, feels good, <clears throat> natural hormones released, dopamines, serotonins, it's all good, 10 seconds, okay, you can let go. Now we put oxygen throughout the cells, we've stabilized the nerves, we've stabilized the hormones. Turn on the pituitary, pineal, hypothalamus. Turn on the brain, balance the hormones, balance our autonomic nervous system. We put ourselves into a deep position of relaxation, and yet we turn on the adrenals with that little bit of fear. The body has learned to deal with an excess of oxygen and a depletion of oxygen. So now we've shot the whole system back to a health and awareness. Now we've talked about this, this problem of the imbalance of negative and positive charged particles and this acid alkaline relationship. And basically this allows electrolytes to work, you see, different types of salts, electrolytes, can dissolve in the water producing positive and negative ions like salt, sodium and chlorine. This allows for the nerves to work and for potentials, battery potentials to work. This is where we get our power from. So it's very important that we balance this. And as waters come in and out of the body, it's very important that we balance this acid alkaline in a true natural fashion to be able to do this. Now our machine helps, the breathing helps, diet helps, lifestyle, you see, because here we have an acid, hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen, that's where the, the proton is, see? That makes it acid. Now here's the alkaline, the base. And it's that hydroxyl ion. This is what makes it a, an alkaline. Everywhere we look, we see acids and alkaline. Every substances. We all have 
lemon juice, very acid, vinegar, very acid, baking soda, very alkaline, ammonia, bleach, alkaline. We need to understand more. We need to start to be able to balance the body and make the body whole. And our system can do this through the potentials of electromedicine. So I hope you learned a lot about pH balance today.